Chairs No Waiting, episode number 327, 10 Things You May Not Know About the Andy Griffith Show. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the fine folks over at Weaver's Department Store. Drop by over at Weaver's and find something that you'd enjoy. All kinds of t-shirts. It's summertime's approaching. It's t-shirt weather. We got four brand new t-shirts, so you definitely want to check them out. I particularly like the one that says, uh, you're not talking to a jerk, you know, by Barney. Anyway, go check it out at weaversdepartmentstore.com. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by donations from listeners just like you. The executive producer of episode number 327 is Jan Newsom. Hello, everybody. I'm Alan Newsom, your host for Two Chairs No Waiting, and Jan is my wonderful wife who allows me to spend my time doing these Mayberry podcasts. So that's why she's bringing it to you. I just realized as I was reading the number, it's number 327. This is JL327. I don't even tell you what that is. I'm sure Mayberry fans would know. But if you don't know, that's the tag number on the squad car. So I should have done this episode about the squad car. But no. Do I think far enough ahead? No. No, I don't. Uh, So, folks, if you don't know me, I'm Alan Newsom. I run the imayberry.com website and uh, the TAGSRWC.com website and the Mayberry.info website. If you don't know what those are, go and check them out. Because if you like this podcast and like the Andy Griffith Show, you'll love those uh, websites. All kinds of amazing information there. And the the imayberry.com site is actually the home of the Andy Griffith Show Rerun Watchers Club, which is run by Jim Clark. Now, the last couple of weeks... The podcast episodes have been all about stuff from The Bullet, which was the E, or not E, the paper version of the newsletter that is produced by the Andy Griffith Show Real Watchers Club, uh, better known as produced by Jim Clark himself as publisher, editor. He, he does it. Uh, and, but in the year since, uh, my goodness, I guess the E Bullet uh, began coming out in the year 2000, I do believe. Uh, it's been a long time, but I'm pretty sure it was the 2000 time frame, maybe 2001, when the e-bullet began. Now, the e-bullet is the official newsletter now. So it's the e-bullet. So you can go and get that. It's all free. But if you go to the imaber.com website and scroll down, you'll see all the links to that kind of stuff. So I want to invite you uh, to go and check those out because if you're a Mayberry fan and if you are found this podcast, you must be. I don't know what else you've been looking for. Then you would love all the stuff that you can get to from these websites. It's all a labor of love. I promise you that because I've enjoyed the Andy Griffith show my whole life. And so often we hear talk here on the podcast about things that are, I don't know, kind of inside baseball. I guess you'd say it's in, it's real in depth stuff about the Andy Griffith show. So this episode, I wanted to just uh, do some stuff that's fun. So I ran across a website called answers.com you guys may have seen this before and at answers.com they had a story that was called 10 things you didn't know about the andy griffith show well these are written for normal people not people that listen to this show or (laughs) attend mayberry events throughout the country there are a few things on here though that i think would be interesting uh, and some of you may not know them You know, I always assume because I've been doing this for several years uh, involved in the podcast and the website that you guys know or remember everything that I have seen over the years. So that may not be true. The truth is, I don't even remember some of the things I used to know. (laughs) So let's go through these 10 things you didn't know about the Andy Griffith show. Did you know that Andy and Barney knew each other before the Andy Griffith show? Did you know that? That's right. Andy and Don had had met each other on the uh, on the No Time for Sergeants in the play. They were performing together, and they did uh, the the movie as well. No Time for Sergeants. Uh, they did that together, and that was where they actually met each other. And you may not have known that. Yeah, Andy played Will Stockdale, uh, the the lead character in No Time for Sergeants, and in the movie. Don played the psychiatrist uh, that was supposed to be uh, testing Andy to see if he was okay to be in the the Army. 
And as part of it, there was some kind of a puzzle that was made out of metal you're supposed to take apart. Well, Andy, Will Stockdale's character, he just unbent the piece of metal <laughs> and took it apart. You know, so that's how he saw the Anyway, Andy and Barney knew each other before the Andy Griffith Show. That was number one. I might have to write these down. I don't think they're numbered. That's number one thing that you may not have known is what I'm telling you. May not have known about the Andy Griffith Show. So number two, number two, uh, more than an actor is what Answers.com said. Andy Griffith was an accomplished singer. Did you know that? You guys realize that? That uh, he he was an accomplished singer in addition to being an actor. In fact, he majored in music. Did you know that? He attended the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Uh, after the Andy Griffith Show, Andy actually won a Grammy for some gospel singing that he did, a gospel song. Uh, he, he won it in 1996 for I Love to Tell the Story, 25 Timeless Hymns. That's right. And he's told the story before that uh, his music, his teachers and stuff like that told him, you know, you'll never make a living singing, you know, and then he won a Grammy. So that was the uh, thing that Andy enjoyed. So Andy was not only a, an actor, he also could sing. So if you've never heard those, those are really nice uh, gospel songs. All right. Did you know, and I'm sure you did, that Andy and Barney were cousins? Did you know that? On the show, Andy and Barney were cousins. Now, that was only mentioned three times. The first time was in The New Housekeeper. and It was the very first episode of The Andy Griffith Show. And it was also mentioned in Manhunt and uh, Runaway Kid. It was three times that it was mentioned that Andy and Barney were cousins. Now, supposedly, it was just a joke. It was just a, uh, a, a gag for the writers to use to get people laughing about small towns and how they you know always hire their cousins and relatives and everything like that uh, but the idea never really took hold and so that was only mentioned in those those first few episodes three times three different episodes and after the first season uh, it was never mentioned again but uh, you know as an Andy Griffith fan I prefer to believe Andy and Barney were cousins they were cousins even though they only mentioned it in those first three episodes and yeah it was to get a joke, a uh, laugh, you know, like, I I just want to thank you. Uh, thank you. You hired me because I was the most qualified. And I just want to thank you, Cousin Andy, you know, that kind of a thing. So, but I, I want to believe that they were really cousins. But you knew that. I bet you knew Andy and Barney were cousins. All right. So here we go to the next one. Hometown Hero. That uh, the fictional town of Mount uh, Mayberry, North Carolina, where the show took place was based on Andy Griffith's hometown of Mount Airy, North Carolina. Do you know that? I bet you did. Yeah, I bet you did. You know, it's not, uh, I mean, we uh, we talk about Mount Airy all the time. So I'm betting that you did know that. But did you know that uh, it was based on North Carolina and Mount Airy, North Carolina? And did you know that Andy denied that for years? He really denied it for many years that that was the case. But he did talk about it at uh, one of the events I was at when uh, they were actually unveiling the Andy Griffith statue in Mount Airy, North Carolina. He finally kind of admitted uh, in front of everybody that the statue or that the city of Mount Airy was kind of what the basis of Mayberry was. Now, what he always meant when he said it wasn't based on him, he always said real towns have real problems. And Mayberry didn't have the same kind of problems that a town like Mount Airy, North Carolina, would have. But the similarities are amazing because if you'll remember, uh, Mayberry was near Mount Pilot. Well, just off in the distance, if you're standing there at the Andy Griffith Playhouse, you can see off at the distance to the south, you can see Pilot Mountain. Now, it's not Mount Pilot, but it is Pilot Mountain. Hmm, what, is, what a coincidence. And all kinds of names were used on the show of little towns and stuff that were around the area. So it was definitely based on the town. And every year, if you didn't know this, you need to know. If you're a fan, we got to have you there. That Mount Airy host Mayberry Days, the last full weekend of September. Plan to be there. All right, so we're up to number five. Number five, Southern Charm is what they called it at the Answers.com. 
what they're talking about here is you might find this surprising, but the creators of the Andy Griffith Show, the only true Southerner was Andy. He was the only Southern person involved in the creation of the Andy Griffith Show. Now, the, the other producers were mostly from Northern cities, like Danny Thomas, who was from Toledo, Ohio. Sheldon Leonard was from New York City, and Aaron Rubin was from Chicago. Did you know that? They're the folks that, who created the show. Now, Don Knotts and several, many of the cast members, several of them were from the South. Uh, Don Knotts was from Morgantown, West Virginia. But uh, the actual creators of the Andy Griffith Show, Northerners. And a lot of the writers, almost all of them, were not from the South. So they actually did travel, according to what Andy told us, to Mount Airy before the show actually started uh, and traveled around that area to get uh, a feel for the, well, the charm that is the town of Mount Airy. And kind of, I think that's where they incorporated that into the Andy Griffith Show. Now, like I said, there's several of the actors were from the South. Uh, comes to mind very quickly is obviously George Lindsay, Goober, and uh, Gomer, uh, Jim Neighbors. They were both from Alabama, you know, just because I'm from Alabama, doesn't, that's not the reason I would, of course, bring that up. But just, you know, I'm just saying that they're from the South. <laughs> okay. And now Aunt B was from New York. Yeah, she was from New York. All right, next one. Next up. Number, I believe this is six. If it's not six, it's just because I can't count and I lost count. But but y'all keep going, going along with me here. Aunt B and Andy didn't get along. Have you ever heard that story before? Now, Aunt B and Andy, at least according to what I have been told and read over the years, uh, they didn't have a real problem when the show was on uh, uh, as far as working together, any like that, thing like that. But after the show had ended, uh, Aunt B, Francis Bavier, did not, uh, she was not open to visiting with cast members. Okay. So uh, cast and crew members said that she could be difficult on the set, which, you know, I'd heard that before. Uh, George Lindsay famously tells the story that one time he said something he should not have and got hit over the head with either a umbrella, which I think is what it was, or maybe the purse. I believe it was an umbrella she hit him over the head with for saying the word that he said that he should not have said. <laughs> so uh, well, I don't know if that makes her difficult or just a, a lady. But uh, Andy and Ron Howard tried to visit her back in 1972 at her home in North Carolina, Siler City, where she had moved. Uh, but she did not, uh, she didn't want to see them and turn them away. Basically, didn't visit with them. Now, to make this story not a sad ending, uh, Andy said that she contacted him in 1989 while she was very ill. And she expressed regret over the difficulties that they had had with each other and that she had done that. So, so that's uh, Aunt B. So that's a, that's a story. It's out there. You know, we, I try not to bring up things like that here on the podcast, but, you know, sometimes they come up. All right, number, I think, seven. I, I quit marking again. You guys can tell me. Number seven, Goodbye, Barney. Now, Don Knotts left the show after five years due to contractual obligations. Did you know that? I guess you knew that. Uh, when the show first started, Andy had told Don that he wanted to do five years of the Andy Griffith Show. Uh, they both signed five-year contracts. And so, uh, you know, as the five years began to dwindle down, uh, Don Knotts just naturally began looking for other work other opportunities that he might be have following the fifth season of the Andy Griffith Show. Well, Andy eventually decided that he wanted to continue doing the Andy Griffith Show uh, on past the five years. Uh, and it would end up going on three more years, eight years total, as you probably know if you're a big fan. Uh, those years were in color, so a lot of you guys don't like those years. But uh, they were after Don left. So I don't know if it's really the color episodes that people don't like or if it's because Don, uh, Barney isn't there anymore is what really bothers everybody. Uh, but the main problem there was that Don had been looking for work and had found it uh, in Universal Pictures. And by the time Andy decided he wanted to keep doing the Andy Griffith show, uh, well, 
it was too late. Uh, Don Knotts had already signed a five-year deal with Universal Pictures, uh, and he couldn't really get out of that. So Barney was basically forced to join the police force in Raleigh and move away from Mayberry. So that's why Don was not on the last three seasons of the show, other than the guest stars, guest shots, which, by the way, he won Emmys for. All right, next up, it was rated number one. One, one. The show, The Andy Griffith Show, went out at the top of the Nielsen ratings. That's right. It was uh, pretty rare in TV history. It's only happened three times. The Andy Griffith Show went out as number one. I Love Lucy went out as number one. And Seinfeld. They all ended while their runs on television while they were number one in the Nielsen ratings. So good job, Andy Griffith Show. Uh, that's pretty neat. Uh, number one show in the country. And uh, next one, No Gun, No Problem. No Gun, No Problem. Uh, on the Andy Griffith Show, Andy was rarely uh, seen wearing a tie or, uh, or a pistol. He didn't wear his sidearm. He didn't wear the old heater, the old Roscoe, the old, you know, what do y'all call it? A gun. Okay, you know, a gun, a gun. He didn't wear one. There were episodes where he wore one or the other, either a tie or a gun, but they were always in relation to some kind of a unique circumstance, like they were hunting a criminal that was an escaped convict or something like that. Uh, but in the show, Andy, Sheriff Taylor, says he doesn't carry the gun because he wants the townspeople to respect him, not fear him. Uh, he was the sheriff without a gun. Now, there's an episode about that in particular where they're going to make a movie about him. But Andy didn't wear the gun, and the reason it was is because he wanted people to respect him and not fear the gun he wore. All right, so you probably knew that as well, that Sheriff Taylor didn't carry a gun. Now, Barney had one. Of course, you know, he didn't <clears throat> He didn't have any bullets in it. He didn't have any, He couldn't take it out in seven, seven emergencies. Yeah, he, he can't take it out. All right, next up, and I think this is it for us. Since this is episode number 327, and the squad card's tag number is JL327. See, there is a tie-in. Wow, I am so lucky. <clears throat> All right, the Andy Griffith Show squad car. Andy's squad car was a Ford Galaxy that was donated by a local Ford dealer. And every year or every time Ford came out with a new model of Ford Galaxy, the old one, the one that they had been using, was sent back to the dealer where it was repainted and sold. Oh, can you imagine? So that means somebody, somewhere, someday, was driving around in Andy's squad car and probably didn't even know it. It was just a used Ford Galaxy. That's all they knew. They didn't know that. Uh, all in all, there were about 10 different models of car used during the filming of the show. Now, that's probably not all for the squad car, but there were, uh, there were definitely squad cars for every year up through 1965. After that, you really didn't see the squad car very often, if at all. You know, they didn't really drive in the squad car. You just didn't see it. So the last season of really seeing the uh, Mayberry Patrol car, Mayberry Unit 1, was the uh it was in 1965 that season when that car would have been out so there's a little bit of trivia and the tag number jl327 and tonight's episode is 327 oh i'm so glad i was able to tie that together oh, i love it when a plan comes together all right folks that was number 10 so that was 10 things you may not have known about the Andy Griffith Show. And even if you did know it, I hope you enjoyed hearing about it again and just thinking about it and bringing up some memories and fun because to me, uh, you know, if I just think about the squad car, it makes me smile. If I think about Barney and his bullet, it makes me smile. If I think Andy doesn't have a, uh, doesn't carry a gun, it makes me smile. There's pretty much none of this that doesn't make me smile. That's why I love this show. I love the Andy Griffith Show and all the things it's done for us. All right, that's, so that's it. So I'd love to hear from you. And let me say this first, though. After the, after the episode music ends, there's going to be a commercial. It's not really a commercial, but Tom Rusk had called in about an event that's coming up in a couple of weeks, and I wanted to give him a chance to tell you about it. So it's going to be after the music 
ends because I try to make the podcast kind of timeless as much as possible. And this event is coming up in a couple of weeks. It's Mayberry and Westminster every year. So maybe whatever year you're listening to this, there will still be one and you'll want to go. But I'm going to give you a chance to listen to that after the episode music. So let's get the episode music started uh, to end us up. And you can give me a call at 888-684-8415. You can drop me an email at floyd at imayberry.com. Or you can just drop by over at twochairsnoawaiting.com and leave me a note. I'd love to hear from you. Tell me some things that other people may not know about The Andy Griffith Show, and we'll share it with them. Because we want to share their knowledge. Folks, we'll see you next time. I hope you have a great Mayberry week. Stay tuned after the music for Tom. Until then, folks, we'll see you then in a week here on Two Chairs No Way. Hey, hey, Two Chairs No Waiting fans, the city of Westminster, South Carolina will again transform into the city of Mayberry for the fifth annual Mayberry Comes to Westminster Festival, May 1st and 2nd. Kicking off this year's festival is the fourth annual Miss Mayberry pageant, set for April 18th at West Oak Middle School. Prior to the opening ceremonies on May 1st, on Thursday, April 30th, is the second annual Crime Stoppers of Oconee County Golf Tourney. Also, the Way Back to Mayberry Bible Study will take place Thursday evening at 7 p.m. at Westminster Baptist Church. Special guest and official host for the festival is Leroy McNeese, an original cast member of The Andy Griffith Show. Also, the Mayberry Lookalikes will be back to entertain folks during the weekend. Headlining is David Browning, the Mayberry Deputy. Memories of Mayberry returns in 2015 on Saturday, May 2nd with a Mayberry favorite, the VW Boys Bluegrass Band. Several other venues are planned along with two Mayberry Day parades Saturday, a cruise-in featuring vintage automobiles, whistling look-alike and trivia contests, arts and crafts displays, music and food venues, a silent auction, and more. For more information, show tickets, and more, go to MayberryWestminster.com. This is Carolina Tom with a special invitation to come back to Mayberry, the 5th Annual Westminster Festival, May 1st and 2nd. We'll see you there.